when I had met Quentin Tarantino at the time of Reservoir Dogs, uh, which, you know, the film was dedicated to my dad. He's in the number one position in terms of dedications. Right. A, lot of, a lot of interesting people in that list, but my dad was numero uno and for good reason. But I was explaining to him that he's really busy with his play and I told him about the play. And anyway, we, we went back and forth for about a year and then he called me, he says, hey, I got the money. Let's get, bring your dad over. I'll, I want him to meet everybody because he wrote the part for him. Wow. The Joe, ba the, the, Joe Cabot. The Joe Cabot part, which was Lawrence Tierney, ended up playing. That was my dad's part. And um, uh, anyway, he ends up not getting the part. And he didn't get the part. Really, what happened was uh, Keitel, mm -hmm. Harvey Keitel, didn't like my dad. Was he afraid of your dad? Yeah, because my dad didn't recognize him. And Harvey Keitel, everybody's telling my dad how great he is, what movie he's in. And Harvey, Harvey said a couple things about, and then they could tell Harvey was waiting for something back. And he could see this thing come over him where he was like, he's not in my film because Harvey was executive producer. And you know, when something in a room, if you're sense, if you've got any sensibilities, what goes on. And then Harvey said, okay, who's next? And everybody looked at Harvey like, what? And that was like, my, my dad's not going to be in this film. And so, yeah, that, and then you don't hear anything from anybody except Lawrence Tierney. We get a phone call from Lawrence Tierney saying, he left it on a voicemail. Wish I still had it. <laughs> hey, hey, Tim, <laughs> these assholes gave me your pot. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, yeah. I read somewhere that Quentin and uh, regretted not putting Timothy Carey in the movie because of how difficult Lawrence Tierney was. Yeah, yeah Lawrence Tierney gave him a run for his money. All right, it it worked out. I think Lawrence did an amazing job. Yeah, he did a great job. But your your father is Joe Cabot. I could definitely see that. It would have been fun to see a Timothy Carey version of it, but it wasn't meant to be. But the, imagine Quentin got to meet him. Quentin was like so yeah. starstruck. It was oh amazing. yeah. Yeah, he was just beside himself. Now, what, what I was getting at was, so now I'm like pissed at him because I helped him. I did a lot of things to help Reservoir Dogs become Reservoir Dogs. Was it a lot? It was a lot for me. I got a, I gave him like a pathway. I gave him like instructions on how to get it done. And and he followed it. And, it, and, I, and I did my part throughout the whole thing, taking all his phone calls. He'd read me things from books on my dad. It was like nonstop filling up my recorder from Quentin Tarantino, just bugging the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and then after he gets, I wouldn't even call him back. Cause I'm like, this guy's like, he's, he's just, somebody wants to make a movie so bad, but you can imagine how much energy is coming off Quentin Tarantino. We go right. eat, we go eat at the commissary. Cause I was working at MGM across the street at Lorimar. There was a, cafeteria we'd go eat we did and he wouldn't eat i go can i buy you something he goes no I'm, I'm, he just wants to talk can't talk and eat as fast as he talks i go man holy shit <laughs> i said look i guarantee you if you keep up your enthusiasm the way you're talking it's you're gonna someone's gonna buy it this is not that he was afraid no one's gonna let him direct something but i gave him a pathway of how Get letters of intent. And these letters of intent, find the most famous people you can. I'll write the first one. I'm going to write one with Timothy Carey. I'm going to have him sign it. And it's going to be, I think you're an amazing director. You got an amazing script. Line this up. As soon as you get the budget, I want this part. That was, that was the template for, that's what he carried on. So he kept meeting more people trying to get letters of intent. And he gets it to Harvey Keitel. And he had his, all his all his letters of intent as he presented stuff as it was building. So everybody looked at it and go, wow, all these people like want to be in it and they want to see him as a director. And he got to do it. And then when, and then when he, my dad doesn't get the part, he would explained everything to me up until that point. Then I don't hear from him anymore. What a bastard. I was like, wow, I don't even want to see that movie. Doesn't even, doesn't even call to say he didn't get the part. That was his part. Right. right? And so then I, I don't see the guy for like two years later and I run into him at the horse and carriage. It's a bar in, in uh, Hollywood. And he's, he's in there and he walked right up to me and says, Hey, Romeo. Oh, well, Hey, how you doing? And he says, he says, 
man, that insect trainer. And then he goes into this whole fart thing about the play, like the right. last conversation I had with him two years ago. And he's explaining to his friend this thing about this play. I'm like, wow. I said, well, what was the deal? With you never even called me back. He goes, oh, it wasn't me. It was, it was they just, you know, uh, your dad didn't fit the, the Christopher pen, you know, that it just wasn't, it wasn't a good, didn't look like father and son. So they just wanted to go with, with uh, Lawrence. Okay. Okay. Whatever. So that was that. But maybe with these things, look, he's just, he's got too much coming at him that one of the, one of the parts isn't going to make a difference to him. He's, he's got too much on his plate now. So I, I get uh-huh. it, but I was a little pissed at him because he went from, he went from my buddy to, I didn't exist anymore, but welcome to Hollywood. Right. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, click on the link below to watch the full interview. And while you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.